I'm going to show you how I make order out of emotional chaos by applying one heuristic to Carmi's seven-minute monologue from the TV show The Bear. I'm a psychologist with nearly a decade of combined research, education, and clinical experience. And one heuristic I use daily with my clients is to figure out when one emotion is a reaction to or results from another underlying emotion. If you watch until the end, I'll share with you a simple approach that you can use immediately to start to discover this even about your own emotions. So Carmi is sharing at an Al-Anon meeting. My name is Carmen. In a very unstructured and free sort of way. My brother's an addict. My, my brother was an addict. He meanders around talking about memories of his brother. When I was a kid, if I was nervous, I was scared, I wouldn't want to do something, he'd always tell me to just face it. How he was surprised by his brother's death. And I lost track of time, and he died. And ultimately how he's left with unanswered questions. I just don't know if it ever meant anything to him. I took some time to categorize the emotions that Carmi either talks about or expresses over the course of this monologue. And here I have it in sequential order. What order or pattern is there to this? You might feel like this is chaos. And it's my job to help my clients get some order and understand themselves better. So that's why we need to apply this one helpful heuristic of figuring out when one emotion is a reaction to or result from another emotion. I apply this heuristic until I find the main emotion that it seems like all of the other emotions stem from. So hang in here with me. This is gonna make more and more sense as we go along. We're gonna start by looking at Carmi's loneliness and isolation that he alludes to here. And the more people I cut out, the quieter my life got. So we can guess if Carmi's isolated from others that he's probably feeling lonely, even though he's not directly saying that. Now let's apply our tool. What could this loneliness be a reaction to or a result of? Well, lucky for you, I've already done the work, and I'm going to tell you that it's about his pride. Check it out here. For the first time in my life, I, I started to find this, uh, this station for myself. I felt like I could speak through the food, like I could communicate through creativity, and I was fast. I wasn't afraid. And it was clear, and I, I felt, I felt okay. Carmi worked hard, became a talented chef, and had some real accomplishments. This seems like it built a healthy sense of pride and self-esteem that helped him feel okay. But Carmi's pride also had a downside, because he became really competitive with others. So now, competitiveness is perfectly fine. But the way that Carmi expressed this competitiveness was by rejecting others as well. When somebody new came into the restaurant to stage, I'd look at them like they were a competition, like I'm going to smoke this motherfucker. Now we get to apply our heuristic. Does this pride stem from another underlying emotion? Yes, it seems like his pride is a result of his unhealthy, unhelpful, rejecting anger. Listen here to how his anger fueled a mode in which he was rejecting of others and striving for pride. And I think that just that flicked this switch in me where I was like, okay, fuck you, watch this. You know, like, like I'm gonna go work in real kitchens, like fuck mom and dad's piece of shit, right? Let me tell you about this kind of anger. For Carmi, he seems to be directing it outward, but I work with a lot of people who direct it inward. In both of these instances, this is unhealthy and unhelpful anger. So let's apply our heuristic again. We definitely need to get underneath this to find out if there's another underlying emotion. Carmi talks about several things that I think could be driving his anger. And I've grouped these things together because I think they're a part of the same emotional experience. And I'm gonna talk about each part, beginning with him saying he felt hurt. He just cut me off cold and that, um, that hurt. And then he also shares about feeling rejected and uncool and lame. And he had made me feel so rejected and lame and shitty and uncool. Let's take these one at a time, starting with his feeling rejected. Well, first thing to know that this isn't an emotion, this is an interpersonal impact. And for Carmi, when he felt rejected by his brother, he felt hurt. So we're getting a lot closer to the emotional bedrock of Carmi's experience, but we're not quite there yet. What made the rejection hurt so much? That brings us to the next emotion. Carmi sharing about feeling worthless and like he has no value to his brother. That restaurant, it has, and it, it does mean a lot to people. It means a lot to me. I just don't know if it ever meant anything to him. Notice that Carmi isn't even saying this directly. He's kind of using the restaurant as a metaphor to talk about himself. It's almost like, I don't know if my brother valued the restaurant, but he's really talking about himself and him feeling worthless. This is a type of shame. Okay, now we are way closer to finding the main emotional pain for Carmi, but we can take it one step further because this experience didn't start just with his brother. Let's listen here to Carmi share about feeling low self-esteem and even worthless as a kid. I didn't have a lot of friends growing up. I had a stutter when I was a kid. I was scared to speak half the time. I got shitty grades because I couldn't pay attention in school. I didn't get into college. I didn't have any girlfriends. I don't think I'm funny. 
Okay, now I think we've hit bedrock. Carmi has struggled throughout his entire life, beginning in childhood, to feel worthwhile and that he has value. This sounds like a deeply painful, old and stuck emotion for him that has become kind of the story of his life and his difficulties. This is how we know that we've found the main emotion out of which all the other emotions stem. But hang on here, because now I'm going to put it back in a different order so you can understand now the story and the sequence of his emotion as I hear it as an EFT therapist. Carmi had low self-esteem in childhood. Seems like he felt worthless and that he didn't have value. So then when his brother rejected him, it hurt because he felt worthless and valueless to his brother. Carmi dealt with this by getting really angry and trying to prove himself and reject others at the same time. This actually ended up paying off because Carmi built some healthy pride and self-esteem, but he kind of kept the rejecting part of it and then ended up shutting others out, which resulted in Carmi becoming really lonely in his life. And then when his brother died, not only did Carmi struggle with the grief of the loss, but now he's still lonely and he's still grappling with unanswered questions of, will I even ever feel valuable and worthwhile to my brother? And now I'll never know. So this is pretty good. We made some order out of what seemed like emotional chaos when we started. Now I'm gonna share with you an approach you can take to try to identify if an emotion has an underlying emotion for you. Just before I do, if you're a therapist out there and you wanna learn how to do this with your own clients, click the link in the description below, join me for an upcoming EFT training and learn some EFT interventions like this. So now to do this for yourself, what I'd like you to do is set aside a few minutes to slow down and try to feel what you feel. And I've gotta say, don't try to rush it. Make sure you have enough time to really slow down, breathe, find a comfortable spot for yourself, and allow yourself to settle in and feel what you feel in that very moment. If your mind tries to take you away, just bring yourself back to physically like what you feel inside your body. Try to identify if you're feeling an emotion whatever it is. If you are, then hold in mind the question, what is this feeling about? And wait for the answer. Don't try to jump to a conclusion or don't try to figure it out. You just kind of hold in mind the question, what is this feeling about? And wait for your body and the feeling to present the answer. And in some cases, your body might present to you another emotion that it's actually about. And that's how you can tell when one emotion stems from an other underlying emotion. And you can practice this whenever and wherever and however much you want. I practice this regularly. It's extremely helpful for me and I guide my clients to do it too. So practice it and let me know how it works for you. You can also learn more about how this works for free by subscribing to this channel and watching another one of my videos like this. That one.